I, I, just want, I just want to um, turn on its head the, the, the idea about government. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of so over politicians. Um, I, I was never actually on them. Um, I say that with great affection for many of them. But um, <coughs> I'm very, again, this is just a, a, a personal view. I'm very struck. Um, this is the fourth quasi-English-speaking country I've lived and worked in for a long time. Um, and it's the one in which people widely and business are more dependent on government for leadership than anywhere else. And, and it really puzzles me. Um, and I, at the opposite extreme, I'd offer you the example of Italy, uh, where um, through most of the post-war years, um, they were on average having a new government um, every 13 months. Um, and so while Rome was fiddling, um, sort of Milan and Turin got in on with building uh, at the time, it's kind of gone off the boil, um, a, a really vibrant economy. Um, so, of course, government has a role. Of course, policies have to be right. Incentives have to be right. Um, but are they just um, enabling what we want to do and we are more forcibly articulating to government what we want to do? And shouldn't we be looking to ourselves rather than to government to give that spark and give that leadership? I think it's a mix of both. Um, I, I think there's a, there's a big role for individual action and, and I don't think the leadership we're looking for has to be from the top. By all means, let it be from the bottom. But I think we're kidding ourselves if, if we try and sort of paint politics out of the picture for two reasons. One is because I think any agenda, and I, I'm very much with Rick, let's not have 20 issues here, much less 40, you know, let, let's try and identify the big things that really matter. But I'll be very surprised if it turns out that most of the big things that matter don't involve changes in government policy, in the tax system or in government spending or in, in you know, the, I mean, why doesn't the warehouse in, in, introduce um, uh, computer systems when it should have? Fundamentally, because it doesn't face enough competition. It doesn't, face us, it, it doesn't need to. Mm. Now, the degree of competition could be just, or the lack of it, could be just a function of the fact that we're small. That's a scale thing, which I, incidentally explains, I think, the dominance of government. This is a small society. It's very easy to get hold of Wellington. You know, it, it's an intimate society. It, it's, not, it's not totalitarian. It's not about government dominating. It's about the ease of access. But that's, that's another point. A lot of our competition... Not all of it, but a lot of it has to do with the regulatory structures that we have, and, and that event, again gets back to the government. But can I make this point about politics? I've read an aphorism attributed to more than one European politician. I, it could be one of those things that's misquoted and attributed in the wrong place, or it could be something that several people have said independently. And it is, we know perfectly well what we need to do. This is, this is politicians in each instance of the quote saying it. We know perfectly well what we, we need to do. We just, none of us know how to be re-elected after we've done it. <laughs> and I uh, can relate to that. <laughs> and maybe one difference between what happened in the 1980s and what happened now, or what faces us now, is that we've changed our electoral system in the meantime. And the relevance of that suggestion is this. I never once imagined during the period that I was Minister of Finance, not once. Well, if I'm actually honest, for about two days, it almost looked as though our current account was going to come positive in 89. And I thought, wow, if that happens, we might just... No, 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 God, no. I didn't think I had any chance of being re-elected. Then the government was going to be re-elected in 87. There was no chance that we would be re-elected in 90. It's actually marvellously liberating. When we debated whether we would privatise telecom, we knew it was unpopular. We didn't think it would help our election chances, but we didn't think our election chances were worth banking on anyway. <laughs> so, you know, now, MMP has made this difference that actually because no government is a government in its own right and every government is a coalition of parties, there's every reason to imagine that another coalition can be formed and maybe people are more timid than they should be. It's a maybe, it's worth a debate. And I'm not saying change the electoral system is necessarily on the list of big things we should do. But we have to make it clear to political leaders 
that we expect them to act in our interests in the widest sense, not the narrowest. If we are frightened of changes in national super or public ownership, then don't expect them to lead us anywhere differently. If we insist that they do the right thing, irrespective of what that does to their election chances, that's for us to determine, not for them to worry about. I'm serious about that comment. You know, then perhaps we would get the right kind of action. Yes, um, I mean, we, the people, I, 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 this is complicated because um, even though we're a small democracy, there are lots of interests and lots of people who disagree about political directions. That's as it should be. Um, I think, if you go back to something I said a second ago, that one of our advantages, one of our strengths, is it's easy to have access to politicians. Yes, they may be influenced by other people with whom we disagree, but we're not inhibited in, in responding to that. We, we can have a public debate about the direction the country needs to, needs to take and take action in large measure ourselves. We, we don't need to feel put upon because a government is influenced by people with whom we disagree. We are free to respond.